The 1v1 interview series is a production of the Boss Rush Network of Podcasts. Visit bossrush.net to listen to our podcast and read our articles, game reviews, and more. You can also follow us on Twitter at Boss Rush Network to stay up to date with our content. Thank you for listening. Hello, everybody. Welcome to One v One here on Bosch Network. I'm your host, the enlightened, excited Envy. Joining me is the lavishy and levitating and lovable Mr. Lamont Reed. <laughs> Hello, good sir. Hey, hey, I'm finally here. How you doing? <laughs> everybody, <laughs> Lamont is part of the Boss Rush writing team, and uh, we're doing this One v One uh, because we, we want you guys to get to know who Lamont is, he, uh, some of his writings and everything. Um, you know, it's a new year, so everybody, happy new year, 2022. Glad that you were able to make it. Yes, um, we celebrated in our own way uh, during these uh, pandemic times. Uh, we definitely, um, so January 3rd, you know, the day has already passed. Uh, Chicago themselves, they have passed uh, where they said anyone who's unvaccinated is banned from a lot of places. I don't know about you, Lamont, uh, if, they, if they've wow. done that. But I think a lot of places, a lot of states are about to start doing that. So, people, if you're hearing this, please go get vaccinated. Why is it important? Because we want to be able to go out this year and, you know, interact with you guys when we come uh, to different conferences and cities and everything. But uh, we're yes. going to get, yes. <laughs> <But we're gonna> get <laughs> into this interview. Uh, Lamont, how are you doing? <laughs> I am great. Um, a little, a little tired, but I'm, I'm great. Great. Just, you know, being able to talk to you and, um, I would, well, I want to apologize. I haven't been able to do it in a while. And also, I, I really got to talk to you. I mean, it's just, you know, you were talking about, you know, the pandemic and, and I just, I wanted to throw this out there that I can honestly say that 2020, 2021, the best thing that has probably happened to me was is that I discovered Boss Rush Networks. Oh. That is the best thing that's happened. And it, it, it was funny. Um, I So I'm on this Facebook um, fan group uh, called, I guess, um, Over 30 Gamers. Yeah. And I, I'm trying to remember what was it exactly that I posted. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> so I was watching, um, you know, uh, Super Mario Brothers. Um, that bitch is Super Mario Brothers three. Yeah. And it was the episode where um, Mario and Le- Luigi have to rescue. Yeah, Mario, Luigi, Princess Toast, and Toad have to rescue Millie Vanilli from Koopa, Koopa <laughs> and his Koopa kid. And and it was one of my favorite. It was one of my favorite uh, episodes. So I took a picture of it and I posted it and I said, "Remember that time the Mario Brothers had to rescue Millie Vanilli?" And it was a huge hit. And next thing I knew, um. Was that Dan? Yeah. Dan sent me uh, a message and said, would you like to write about video games? And I said, hmm, I've thought about doing that a long time ago, but I've never, you know, you know actually went through it. So uh, I said, well, let me get back to you on that because I'm not really sure. One of it was, I guess, because of honestly a lack of confidence and and uh, so I went to him again, talked to him about it. And I said, well, you know, I'll, I'm going to give it a shot. And I got to meet all these amazing people. Um, and it was just like a whole world just opened up for me. Oh, and man. and I just, it's pretty much, it. I truly feel the community in gaming. And it's, gosh, it's, it's truly amazing. I can't, I can't tell you how grateful I am. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, trust me. When we court, when 
I mean, when Corey started this, uh, even before I came on, not Boss Rush, but when he was DNA and stuff, um, me and him were doing two different things. And be- through Nintendo Voice Chat, the podcast, um, just the Facebook page, we met there. And, you know, we've been friends, uh, still best friend. Like, that's my bro. Him. Like, that's my best friend. Like, he's literally my brother. Yeah. If he need anything, I'm going to try to do everything for him to help him. Um, he's amazing. He is amazing. Yeah. We, we, you know, we've been through our ups and downs. And we talked about this on many podcasts and stuff. And I think that's kind of the one thing, uh, speaking about Facebook, that, it does have it did have its benefits and for some people it's up to you on if people are still on that on that platform or not but it was because of facebook me and corey met and it's kind of now because of twitter and discord how we're meeting other people and do our podcasts and video shows and more in our writings and stuff meeting more people getting their uh you know, getting their interest and hearing their opinions and opinions and stuff. We never thought we would grow like this. You know, we all, me and Corey, uh, and when, even when Jesse came on, it was just like we are doing this. Yes, for the community, but not just for us, but like this is one of our passions. This is something that I have fun with. And if, if anything happens, you know, we'll still all have each other. And to see that a community with Boss Rush has just grown within the writers, the podcast, um, you know, with uh, different people at different podcasts and their communities and, and being interactive. And, you know, uh, hopefully we do more of that with other podcasts and, you know, help them get off the ground and stuff. Um, it's very interesting from where we started to where we get now. And trust me, being nervous is part of the thing. We, me and Corey talked about uh, and I know this. This is one of you wanted about you. Trust me, we'll get to you. Uh, the, the thing about it was that putting ourselves out, we didn't know what was stick. We don't. We didn't know how we would jail. And the moment me and Corey started talking and podcasting and everything, it felt like I knew him from years, and vice versa. And we just been like that. And so, getting to start something new when you're getting into it you're always going to feel nervous you're always going to be like i don't know if this is going to work i don't know what the reaction is going to be me i'm such a creative type i will put stuff out there if it's wrong if it's janky if people want to be argue or people like it or whatever i am willing to put it out there because i want to express my creativity i just and you know i do i have been nervous before you know, uh, it's not always easy singing <laughs> in front of a crowd. It's not always easy leading worship and stuff like that at church. But I'm like, when you start doing it a lot, you get used to it and you break that nervous. Oh, yeah. um, you know, uh, so I'm happy that, you know, even if you feel nervous, Lamont, you have put out some great writing content out there and it's been fantastic to share with people and everything. Um, and that's, I think that's what we do with boss rush is that we want to share other people's content, not just our own. And, you know, for some people, yeah, it is just, it's a great exposure, but we want people to see their work and see their creates creating because that's where we kind of started from. You know, we wanted people to show our creation and show how great of community and podcasters and editors and stuff like that we were. We are. So, um, sorry about that, Aaron, That tension. Oh, there. no, no. <laughs> I, I mean, it's just, uh, just you know, really enjoying uh, hearing about... Um, I know you told me this before, or and I can't remember, but when did you guys start? Uh, so boss rush again we started boss rush about two so we started with d well Corey started dna about 2014 15 i think around that time um i was doing optional opinion so i had my own podcast and i was part of a different group uh the nominous radio network so optional opinion was about there and i was just jumping on everybody's podcast world one one podcast doing the, the nvc book club just um, the Devil Cox experience, just jumping around, meeting different people, doing their podcast. Um, and when me and Corey started, uh, we were still DNA, and then we switched to Nurse Gone Raw, which was NGR. Um, and then we went to uh, 
code name uh uh code name NX. It was when we started about 2018, 19, I think, about there. Um it got to no 17, 18. We got to Bosch Rush around 2019. Uh oh, okay. No, 2019 2018 19 um because uh cory ended up changing the name for it and we were talking and everything so that's where everything came up and stuff i feel like i heard that before back then code name nx nx yeah because we it was me cory jesse and ray um um uh um that that were part of it and then um over time things changed and we went to uh boss rush we was we were boss rush gays and then he switched us to network because we had gays and entertainment and stuff so oh. um that's how all of that are <sighs> let me that's get to this before we want <laughs> you oh that's, that's <laughs> cool <laughs> uh, <and everything. laughs> uh i want to ask you lamont how did you get into gaming um uh, Oh, okay. Um, let me see. All right. I think I was mm, seven. I was seven years old. And um, <laughs> just thinking about this. Uh, it was Easter. And um, I went over to my grandmother's house after church. And... Um, in her, she has like she has like this uh, finished basement. It was probably like the coolest place to be because mm-hmm. uh, she had a Nintendo there, and I didn't know what this thing was. I just thought it looked cool. But one of my cousins was playing it. It was Super Mario Brothers, and I was like, "Oh, this looked pretty nice." So I asked if I can play. He gave me the joystick. I'm not doing anything. I'm not jumping. All I, do, all I was doing is running. I keep falling off of cliffs. You know, seven years old. I'm like, oh, what's the point of this game? But, I mean, it looks really good. So I'm hooked. I'm hooked. I'm constantly, you know, running it into the cliffs, not knowing I'm supposed to jump. You know, I'm just, you know, just controlling Mario, just running. But I'm having fun with it. So uh, I didn't have a game uh, on my own. So after that, let me see. Uh, let's see. Christmas went by, and uh, I told mom, I, "This is what I wanted Santa to give me." But Santa gave me an Atari, <laughs> and and um, you know, I I don't want to bash the console. I mean, I have fun with it. It's just. I wasn't as impressed with it as I was with the mm-hmm. Nintendo. Um, but I still, you know, I still have fun with it. And, uh, um, dang, I can't remember the name of that race car game I was playing. Oh, NES or Atari? Ato- Atari. Was that Cruising? No, Pro Position. Pro- Pro- oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so everybody. I'm games. telling my age. I'm 41 years old. I had the I had the Atari 2600. I'm 41. I thought I was older than you. Nope, I'm 41. The oldest in our crew uh, is Laurent, and I'm second oldest. Well, no, Mark and Jack. Well, Mark and Jack. Mm. Oh, huh, yeah. That's that is so funny because when. <laughs> when Corey said I was the pre-evolution of you, I was just like, hey, wait a minute, I'm older than Ed, and wow, okay, cool, all right, I'm I'm 39, so ah, okay, yeah, I'm, I, I'll be 40 in April. <laughs> welcome, welcome to the I joined the club soon, so, um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so after that, after the Atari, okay, um. A year went by, uh, my mom's friend, uh, we went to visit her. And she has a daughter and son. I had a little crush on the daughter. Um, She was like 10 years older than me. She let me play his, the brother's Nintendo. And I'm trying to remember, was I even playing Super Mario? No, I was playing Super Mario Brothers 2. Yes. Oh, I fell in love with that game. Oh, my God. That I didn't is, know what I was doing. 
that the is... brother came in and yeah, the brother came in and you know he's like, you know, I'll touch my things. You know, he took the joystick from me and then I'm just like, <laughs> and I said to myself, one day I'm going to get a whole bunch of games and I'll show you. Yeah, and I got them all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, brother, two is the game that I Christian when I moved to the current house that I'm in. Uh, it was the game that I christened the house with because I had my we didn't have no furniture or anything, but I had my TV here and I had my Nintendo and in it the only game that I had was Super Mario Brothers 2 and I played the whole game without oh. no no codes or anything. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Uh 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 yeah. I'm trying to remember when oh yeah. Sorry, I keep going on with the story. Uh, it's kind of long, but I'm, I'm towards the end now. So anyway, I finally get the Nintendo uh, with Super Mario Brothers. I didn't get Super Mario Brothers 2. I don't know why I didn't get that. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, so I ended up getting that. My dad surprised me after a very good report card because I worked my butt off for those grades. <laughs> <laughs> Just like I crap. Ooh, straight B's. Like, yeah, I'll take it. You know, so I was really, 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 really happy. And it, and, and it got me into gaming. And um, ever since then, every birthday, every Christmas, I had to have a game. 1990. The super, I asked Santa for a Super Nintendo. Yes, I was 10 years old. And yes, I was still believing in Santa Claus. I don't know, he was not 10 years old. At 1990? No, I'm, I'm sorry. Wait, I'm tripping over here. 1990. So you was eight. Uh, I was, yeah, yeah, I was eight. I was eight. I'm tripping. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mom broke the news to me that there was no Santa Claus, and I bawled, my, I bawled to tears so bad. I was like, no, who's going to get me my Super Nintendo? <laughs> <laughs> Well, she brings it out, and I'm like, oh, oh, okay, all right, thank you, mom. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I remember getting my Super Nintendo. So my friend, he has my next door neighbor, still my best friend. He had the Super Nintendo. And he had Turtles in Time, and we played that book out to death. So when I got my, you know, it, of course Mario was packed in and let people play the stuff. Yeah. I had asked for Turtles in Time. Also, and because I would play that over his house and everything, and I'm just like, I'm going to perfect this. And I played that game out like I played it for hours. Like, uh, because the thing about it is just like the gift that that I would take it was it's a video game, it had to come from Konami or it had to come from Capcom. I would, t- I would really? take Nintendo's. Yeah, I was because I was getting Nintendo's own. I was getting Nintendo games, their own games throughout the year. So I would get like the Legend of Zelda. I would get um Super Mario Brothers two and three because a my mom liked Mario, and I would get Zelda for like my birthday or anything. Um, <laughs> so I didn't have to worry about those games and stuff. Uh, I oh. I ended up I actually ended up getting Super Metro. So my cousin in the summertime he was staying at my grandma's house and he had his, he had a super nintendo and he had super metroid with the guidebook and so i beat uh he didn't beat super metroid yet i beat it because i was going over to my grandma's house every day playing it <laughs> and so he moved out or something because he also taught me how to play street fighter 2 yeah so yeah. when he started, when he started, you know, I was coming over and he wanted to challenge me. I was beating him at his games and everything. Yeah. <laughs> Who's who your right. main? Who's so your main? my so my main was Ryu. Okay. Uh, but when I got Street Fighter Two, uh, because I bought the Turbo Edition, I started doing everybody. I started learning everybody, like Gao, Shun Li, Zangief. Uh, Blanca. I started learning and started doing uh, timing. So as long as I could time stuff. And at first I had 
uh, I had a set, a set kind of control, but I ended up changing it because it's just like, you know what? I'm realizing that, yeah, I could get hyped with the Dragon Punch, but it's not taking that much energy. If I do this mid or I do this low, I could take off with a lot of energy. And I started changing stuff up. And so I started beating him and other people at these games and stuff. And then it took That's my, amazing. It took my skills to the arcade to like really learn to like put it in because that's how I beat like Mortal Kombat 2. That's how I learned to play Kinder Instinct. It's just like when the home version came on the Super Nintendo, I would learn everything and then re go back to the arcade and put my uh, learning skills there. Oh man, oh my gosh, wow! So. I that's a that's truly amazing. I, I didn't analyze the moves that way, I'm just Playing, I let me see who did I play the, with the most. Um, Ken and Chun Li, yeah, the most. I think, yeah, yeah, Ken, Chun Li, a little bit of Blanca, but I was usually those three. Yeah, it yeah when when uh, Akuma came and I started I started to learn Akuma. So Akuma is uh, so Ryu is my main. Akuma is my second. And uh, uh, I think Mikado, I think that's her name. Oh, no, it's one of the one of the it's the ninja female from uh, um, Street Fighter Three Third Strike. Street Fighter Three Third Strike is the I to me. Oh, I know you talking about Third Strike is the best fighting game. I love Smash Ultimate. I yeah. love Soul Calibur. I love Turtle, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters. I love Mortal Kombat 2 and Killer Instinct. I love all of those. But Third Strike, the moves, the sound, the music is everything. I think it's better than Marvel vs. Capcom 2. <gasps> yeah, yeah, it, it, it's 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 pretty much up there. I I haven't, I don't think I've ever finished that with anybody. I got to go back and. I gotta go back and uh, play that because I have the. Um, hmm, I may do that tonight. If you have the Street Fighter, that? if you have the Street Fighter collection on Switch, you should, yes. you should be able to do it. Yes. Um, so I, I can uh, I can truly say that's the best collection. I, I mean, wow. And I, I I mean I got a favorite too. My favorite was uh, Street Fighter Alpha uh, Two. Yes, uh, the stages in that game. See, everybody, see, folks don't know when it, when we talk about games and the stuff that I know and that I play because I know I played a lot because I had that game for PS2, but I used to play it also not PS2, PS1. I used to also play it in the arcade. That yeah. I love the level design in Street Fighter Alpha 2. Oh, yeah, me, me too. And that and the music is top notch. Yes. Um, I had it for, um, we had the Sega Saturn. I love that system. Ah, I so had jealous. that, and have you ever played, well, I'm sure you have, um, X-Men Children of the Atom? Yes, I played the arcade version. Oh, oh gosh, I wish they would bring that back somehow. Uh, they never will, but Oh, it's so good. I love that game. It's a, it's a, I think Capcom would have to go to Disney now to get that. They can't oh, go to yeah. Marvel. Oh, yeah, I, I forgot. Well, I mean, um, apparently they're talking about Marvel versus Capcom 2 making a comeback. They're talking I, about it. So the thing about that is that I kind of don't want it to come back. And the reason, and I know I'm going to get words for this. Yes, yeah, right, we're going to go back to this interview for one more. But <laughs> Tatsunoku versus, I think Tatsunoku versus Capcom is the game that I think needs to be on Xbox and PlayStation. I love that it came yeah. out on Wii. It was like, it was literally exclusive to Wii. But so many people miss that playstyle. That's how, uh, that's, that's why Marvel versus Capcom 3, uh, the infinite one that came out when the, when, uh, Capcom start changing the controls to play like that game. 
it was from there because it was easier to do combos and learn stuff. They like they literally simplified it, and you still was able to do a six button six button fighting thing. But I think people didn't realize oh how great that game was, and it's yeah, beautiful. It, it, it was great. It was great, and and like when I tell people about it, they were like, "I never heard of that before. What what is this?" Then I had to show them, and they're like, "Well, why isn't this on you know other systems?" Like, I don't know. I, honestly, I was in shock that it was even on the Wii. So, uh, <laughs> so you you don't know part of the story, right? So oh, right. So it was a licensing issue with a lot of the characters because um, uh, Tatsunoku, uh, they have so much like anime and everything, and I think it was part of I think it was Bandai. There was there was licensing problems that Capcom had to figure out to you know get around. And a, a lot of the characters people here in America don't know, so you got you could literally have to be deep into anime in order to know those characters. So when it came out of Japan, you know, it was kind of easier. But getting it to America, there were just so many licensing problems; it was just confusing. But then eventually, it all got fixed, and they and they came over. Uh, and they only did about one or two prints of it uh, for a run. So when it sold out, you were not able to get that game at all because you know we didn't do digital sales that way. So um, that's true. It. <laughs> It you were able to f- what happened was that people were able to still play the game, but they had to play the Japanese arcade game, and you had to go to GameWorks to do that. Now, have you ever uh, bought an import before? No, because the game came oh. out um, for America. Tatsunoku versus Capcom had its America version. We didn't have the Japanese version, so I bought the game the day that it dropped. For fifty dollars, I I did too. Uh, what was it today? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I honestly I can't even remember where I got it. I think it was. I got it at Toys R Us. I got it from my job. Oh yeah, of course, the Toys R Us. <laughs> <laughs> so. oh, oh man, that's so awesome. So, but Lamont, I want to ask you. Uh, sure. how, how, how did you get into writing? Um, because I know you you love nerd culture, and you know we talk about video <laughs> games. Uh, but how did you actually get into writing? Like that you wanted to write about video games, or even about uh comic books or whatever uh in the entertainment. Um, let us know. How did you get into it? Oh, um. Well, um, I did a lot of uh, writing uh, growing up. A lot of maybe like little short stories and poetry. And um, I just really enjoyed it. Um, this this may sound corny, but I think when I was in the fourth, fifth grade, there was this girl who, no, Seventh grade, seventh grade. Uh, there was this girl I really, really liked. And I just started writing these poetry, these poems about her. Um, I didn't like give them to her or anything. I just kind of kept them to myself. Yeah. And for some reason, it just kind of developed into a love of writing. So I was, I would write these little short stories about how I become like a, a superhero and try to save people and everything and uh, little bits and pieces. And, you know, and I, and I think I remember one day I told somebody uh, <laughs> that if, um, cause I've, I've had all these fantasies. Like, no, when I, when I find somebody, I'm going to like, you know, always write them poetry and write little short stories about her, you know, just, I, I I have a very huge imagination. It's it's really huge, but I just loved writing that way. And so um discovering boss rush like I'm still trying to build that confidence in actually writing a game review. 
because when it comes to me in games, like I don't finish them quickly enough to develop an opinion, a full mm-hmm. a full opinion, and I don't want to disappoint anyone. So it just kind of like, you know, like I, I always think of people like you know you and uh, Stephanie, and I'm just like, man, they are so good. How do they beat these games so fast? And you know, and and just be able to write down this full fledged review, and it's just like, oh my god, uh, oh. She's awesome, by the way. She is. Yes, Stephanie she, is amazing. She she's truly amazing, and that and that's another thing. See, you're 41. And you probably, and I'm sure you already know about this. So back in the day, for me, I was too afraid to even tell girls that I love video games because that meant that oh, you're just a geek, and everything. Now. I don't care. It's just like it's, I want it's, you to know I'm a gamer, you know? Exactly, because it's just like, hey, this is part of me. I'm being honest. This is one of my hobbies that I love. If, if you, yeah. If you like me for it, that's awesome. Let's get it together. If not, I can respect it, you know? If, you, if it doesn't do nothing for you, that's fine, too, you know? But I'm just yeah. like, gaming is pretty much part of my lifestyle, it's, you know? That's how I communicate with other people is through games, you know, talking about themes and artwork and stuff like that, connecting and having at least something to talk about. It's it's the sports of my livelihood at times because some people, you know, <laughs> they like sports or they like politics. They got that one thing that they could go on about because they're knowledgeable in it. And games is for me or for us here at Boss Rush is is the thing you know definitely even with movies you know mark uh is doing a fantastic job with the movie reviews yeah. and everything i could the problem i couldn't out uh, I, I i i think i told mark this uh not telling you Lamar, i can't do movie reviews because i comment on so much on twitter that if if i'm watching a movie and you see me making uh, comments about it, like doing like Twitter commentary. I'm going to tell you about the goof, this goofy movie, and the foolishness that it's in, or stuff that <laughs> if I if i have not if I'm watching a movie and I don't tweet about it or I don't put it on Facebook, or I don't say nothing about it, then I'm into the movie, or you know I fell asleep, and I will let people know at the end, be like, oh I like this movie, it's good. Like I my review for a movie would be differently like literally on social media <laughs> but mark he does a fantastic <laughs> because it's 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 so much stuff that i will point out be like okay that doesn't make sense your character said that can't do this but three screens ago you was doing the same thing that you were said that you can do <laughs> like i <laughs> it, it's just it's so it's I, I i don't know if my views make people upset when it comes to movies but like i literally i i didn't know how to do a beauty i literally just went in and just wrote something i finished the game wrote a review gave it a score and put it out it, it wasn't edited it probably was jacked up but Everything that I put into it is because I was passionate about this game or I felt a certain type of way for it. And I put it out there. And whether there's like grammar, there's going to always be grammatical errors. I'm not a great writer, everybody. I, I, I try my best. Thank you for the editors at Boss Rush for making yeah, my work yeah. better. Uh, but I'm trying to be better at my writing and stuff. Uh, and yes, I, yes, put it out there is kind of, kind of never- great writer. Yeah, I mean, you you really are a great writer, you know. Um, I, I well, actually, I I do have a favorite review that I read. It was uh, Laurent's um, Metroid Dread review. Yes. And I was just like, wow. I I mean, if and 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 I will. I, I mean, eventually, I'm I'm definitely going to put a review out um, at some point. I really would love to, you know, kind of. D- dive deep into a game that way. Believe it or not, I have games that I have not opened up and played yet. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> like, hi. You know what? Me and J- 
at the sign of this recording, me and Jesse was talking about that. Of uh, you know, there's the games that we have we have to play, and uh, I think David uh, or one of uh, David or Block. I think it's Block. He said that he wanted to go back and you know uh, talk about Hellblade Sin and the Sacrifice. You know, before the new one came out, he wants to review for it, and Ooh. I literally told him that we, me and Corey, because we, me and Corey did a show called Pod and Play. And so oh, we would play, so we would play a game and we would podcast over it. And audio issues aside, we really were talking about the game and the things that they were doing. You know, um, sometimes the, the uh, our gameplay or the gameplay that you see is it, it is what it is. But I literally was just like. Uh, when I, when we were talking about Horizon Zero Dawn and Hellblade, we were getting deep because it was just like these are things that we could talk about and everything. And I think when you get ready to do your review for whatever game, because you could review any game at Boss Rush, oh new, it could be six months old, you know, six months. And you, if you got the game today and you be the next the next day, and you want to do a review, do it. And because that's what we feel like, you know, you have that freedom to do it and stuff. And I think when you get to writing a review, it, it's going to be nerve wracking because I think people get, I think people not not take it serious. I think people are afraid for the reaction of what the score is going to be and not the context. Yeah, yeah. Because the thing about it is, is that people. If they're going to get mad at the score and not know the context of it, it's a weird thing. It's still that weird connection that people are just like, I don't like this site or anything or this author because they gave it a, this number or this star. And then you're like, well, you got to read the context for it. You can have a love for a game and for a company, but reading the context for that game is more important than what the overall score is. It is. And yeah, and I, I agree, and especially because you know, at the end of the day, you just really got to see it for yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, what what would you rate it? Um, IGN is really good about that. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's I think, and I, that's why I I feel like when you actually because when you put out when you put out your first review. Yes, you are going to be nervous, but we are here at Boss Rush going to have your back. We're going to share it. We're going to be like, everybody, read this review. I'm like, I think you will find it interesting. Hear this person's thoughts about this game and stuff. Because it could be something that you love that I might not love or anything, but I'm going to be re- reach a review, and I'm going to take your opinion at heart. Uh, Not opinion at heart. I'm going to take your opinion and just be like, that was a good way that he wrote this, that he came across. And the things that he talked about, I probably would have him, I didn't think of, but now I am thinking of it. Because trust me, I wrote the review for Red Dead Redemption. <laughs> I... Uh, I have to find it. I think it's still on my. I think it's still on the boss rush, boss rush page. I have to find it. And I gave that game. I think. I think we were doing stars or a gray. I think I gave it like a C or a B or something. And it wasn't because of my approach or my thoughts of Rockstar. It was just that, the, in this context, this is why I felt this way. And yeah, right. it caused it caused some controversy, but that was when you're feeling some type of way and you see stuff, you just be like, okay, now I understand why. So, hey, right, I'm sorry, we're trying to get this one. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 that's cool. That's cool. So now this the this the first Red Dead De- Redemption. The second. The second. Well, it's so. Uh, this Red Dead Redemption is the third game in the Red Dead series. Is oh, good lord! Yeah, it is. Okay, okay. Yeah, but from okay. Rockstar is the second. Yeah, from Rockstar is the second game. So I play uh the game. It was just like okay, I understand that the world is beautiful. I understand is it, you know gameplay is what it is, but. I had a certain had a certain thought where if I compare it to Max Payne three, 
I would go off and say that Max Payne 3 is, is probably Rockstar's best game ever from that company. And I could talk about why and stuff. I haven't did a review for Max Payne 3 because I want a re I want a remaster to come out. I think Max Payne 3 is one of their best games and stuff. Never played it. I feel bad about that too. <laughs> I, I I just never had the chance to play it. That's fine. I've never played the first or second one. Uh, you know, and it was because of I just didn't. I was I was so into my Nintendo. I was just like, yeah, GameCube. That that's it. That's my life. PlayStation <laughs> Two and Xbox, yeah, but PlayStation Two was my RPG system, and Xbox was like for the third party stuff that was used games. GameCube, yeah, that was the spot. yeah, yeah. I yeah. Um, you you mentioned the PlayStation Two. Um, I remember when I PlayStation Two got me started on Final Fantasy series, and I started with the Final Fantasy Ten. Oh man, I, I was blown away by that. To this day, is still probably one of my favorite Final Fantasy games. <sighs> I love Orin and I love Lulu. Okay. I think I didn't like the air fight. And I didn't like the one villain with the horns that you had to be. I didn't like his fight neither. His fight was too long. I'm like, <laughs> die! <laughs> die, you! <laughs> I'm hearing you everything. You won't die! And I think that was the thing about uh, screaming. <laughs> Uh, but I do love, I do, I do agree that Final Fantasy X is a great game. I think it's because of Nine was such a joy to play. Um, yeah. And you know, three slash Final Fantasy VI, um, being able to suplex that ghost train was everything and more. Um, yeah. <laughs> I did twelve. It's just twelve is so good. Um. Of course, seven is like a classic. I think seven kind of represents the Final Fantasy series for the modern age, in the sense, yeah. you know. Um, but yeah, seven blew me away. Um, mainly, like of course, the the story and and everything. Um, when I finished that game, I was just I was super happy. I wanted more because I mean, you know. There were so many things that I didn't get a chance to do. Um, like, I didn't know anything about Ruby. And the, you know what I'm talking about? The yeah. huge mechs that was... I didn't know any anything about those. And I wanted to go back and do a replay and, and fight those. And I, it, was just, it was just an, an amazing game. I, I was... Um, I, and I'm sorry, I'm rambling on and on. Um, but... Uh, I remember the day I found out Final Fantasy VII Remake was coming out. I I thought I was gonna have a heart attack. Was, I, that, I really <laughs> was that at the when they announced it? Yeah. Okay, so that was um, I think 2014 E3. Uh, yeah, yeah, it, it sure Sony, was. Because everybody said that Sony won it. And everything, and uh, you know, you see all the memes and people, and Sony, they did a fantastic job with it. I, I didn't believe that they were going to be able to do it because of I didn't either. You know, Square had lost a lot of money because of their movie production that they closed, so they lost a lot of oh, money. Yeah. So seeing it as a tech demo, and then they said, "Hey, we're actually going to go ahead and do this." Uh, I was shocked that they went through it. You know, <laughs> I remember. Did you watch uh, E3 with us this year? So I watched E. I did watch E3 with different people, but I didn't. Uh, the only uh, recap episode I was on was Nintendo because every time the recaps happened, I had to work. So oh, yeah, when uh, but I wrote about them and, and everything. So when I was able to, 
watch Nintendos and everything. I was able to be on the Nintendo one. Uh, but I I watched the uh, recaps that you guys did. You did a great job and everything. Um, yeah, so I didn't get to watch all the shows with everybody. Just Nintendo was the only one that I got to watch with the Rider crew, and I was kind of loud for that one. I, <laughs> I understand. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, like... Um, the, oh. the, well, there was this guy um, on E3, and he was talking about all the E3s he had the chance to uh, go to, and he talked about the one in 2014, and he said... He, he was a writer. I forget his name. But anyway, uh, IGN, as a matter of fact, IGN, I forget his name. But anyway, he said he remembered he was talking to um, someone down the hall. And when when that music played, the entire world had a collective gasp. Mm-hmm. And so many people shouted. I, I mean, and it, and it was just, it was right. Th- listening to that really made me feel like, wow, this is a real community, you, you know? And it was just, it was the best. I, I just loved listening to uh, him talk about that. And it was just like, man, because I remember I was there. I fell out of my chair. <laughs> oh wow! Well, I I kind of want to ask you now that you brought E three up, what do, which game reveal you thought capture a moment? Do you think it was the Final Fantasy seven remake? Do you think it was Halo Infinite uh, when Microsoft revealed it, or do you think it was Breath of the Wild for? Because when Breath of the Wild came, uh, when Breath of the Wild came, you got me. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I was super excited for um, Final Fantasy VII remake, but I was uh, I was really excited for Breath of the Wild. I I mean I was my mouth dropped. I've mm-hmm. never been excited for grass before. I was excited for grass. <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> Wow, look at this. I I mean, I, I just couldn't even make out make make a believe it or not, I still have yet to finish that game. I have not finished the game yet. I'm gonna try it. I'm I'm gonna finish it eventually. I, but I I ain't guilty. I did uh, it took me four years to finish that game and Corey uh, got really? on, Corey Ooh. and the whole half of the boss rush team got on me. Hey, what are you doing? And I, because I have the <laughs> Wii U version, and we started it when I got my Switch version. And I, it, I and I tell people, I'm like, you just don't know how many games and systems that I was going through when I was playing Breath of the Wild <laughs> and and everything because. Me and Corey, yeah, you know, Corey gets on me about Breath of the Wild stuff and everything. I'm that's came up for Breath of the Wild too. But I'm just like, dude, I'm like, when you got Horizon, when you got God of War, when you got Forza Horizon uh four, when you got to hit the Halo Master Chief collection, Gears Five, when you have all of these great game modern games that are coming out, Gree, the Gardens Between, like when you have all of these games, Bayonetta 2? Come on now. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Even though I've been, even though I played it on Wii U, uh, when it came out, dude, that re-release, I was stuck. I was, I was sucked in again, and it's just oh, like, yeah. it's just like, people doubted so much about Switch and didn't realize on oh, how much goodness is in the system of, when it comes to games. So when, when yes, when Breath of the Wild four, I mean Breath of the Wild came out. There was just so much goodness coming out on different platforms, but I was bring I was building a big library for Switch, and I can't help it. I'm like, this Breath of the Wild is great, Horizon is great, but there's so much in those months that came. You know, Super Mario Odyssey, like, dude, that, wow. you know. There was just too much goodness coming out. So, yeah, it did take yeah. me four years to beat it. So, take your time. Whenever you feel like you want to beat it, I'm rooting for you. Go ahead. Go ahead and beat it. I, I take the jabs. I, t- I take the laughs and everything. But I did finish it. And it's just like, 
I'm glad that I got to finish it. I can't wait for part two and stuff. And yes. the only that's the only that's the, the only struggle I'm gonna have is when more great games come out. And get ready for 2022. See, um, uh oh, or right, oh. Right. <laughs> So, so I I agree. Get ready for 2022, but it has to top 2019. It has to. If it cannot top 2019, 2019. You got fire. You have Fire Emblem in July. No, you had Hollow Knight in June. You had Fire Emblem in July. You had Astro Train in August. You had uh, Link's Awakening remake. You had Dragon Quest. Uh, you had 11. Dragon Quest ten, no eleven, come 11. out on Switch. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I had uh, what's the robot game? Um, that came on Switch that people didn't like, but I enjoyed. That was that was kind of like, uh, man, you just had a lot. Like- um, it was on Switch. Uh, it's a Switch exclusive. Um, uh, because it was from it's a mech game. Uh, and it was from pe- the people who did uh, the one of the animators they did Gundam. One of them was from uh was from from Software, who did uh that one. Their uh, thank it. One of from Software's. Uh, first games. Uh, I could probably look it up. Um, it was a, it was, it was uh, something Machina. Uh, oh, oh, uh, uh, oh, it's like Machina DX or something like that. Or, yeah. Uh, oh, I know what you're talking about too, man. Damon X Machina. Damon Damon Cross. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I always call it Damon X Machina. That trailer, the the first time I seen that trailer, even before I got to do, before, even before I got to do it, I'm like, this is my game. The, this right here, I don't <laughs> care what anyone else says. Nintendo opened that that when they did that at E3, they opened up real strong. But I was just like, that came in 2019 in the midst of all of these great games dropping, and it was just like, I was. I, I was telling one of my Twitch uh, Twitter followers, uh, my friends and stuff, and he was just like, why didn't nobody talk about Astro Chain? I was just like, because people were still with Fire Emblem Three Houses. Th- Nintendo had, there was so much heat dropping out that uh, for Switch. It was just bonkers. I'm sorry. I love Astro so- Chain. Right. I'm sorry, everybody. This is not your usual 1v1. <laughs> uh-uh. I, I I mean yeah I mean it's yeah I I do love my Astro Train haven't finished that one either but yeah, yeah. I agree with you on that is uh, I mean they were just throwing them out there um, 2017 well 2017 you know start off with the Switch so they couldn't yeah. you know constantly but yeah 2019 was huge I I'm I'm really hoping 2022 is huge but um hope I mean hopefully. With this pandemic and the shortages and all of this, it's, I don't know. I, I, I just, it's got to get better. <laughs> it's got to get yes. better. It's got to get better. And I want my TH Ninja Turtles Struggles Revenge. Yes! I need that game. Oh, I dude, do do So, people who, got <gasps> this, who, people who are planning to get the game, they're going to be buying the Switch and other platforms, whatever. People are literally hoping. Uh, uh, that there is a physical coming out because um, that's yeah. how Streets of, that's how Streets of Rage uh four was um, Death Door like everybody's going to be because they're going to be like if if they say no limited games are doing the physical for Shredder Returns it's already going to be sold out on Switch oh yeah yeah I'm I'm, I'm double dipping I'm getting I probably get it for PS five. And uh, the switch. Now, I I will say this. I think the game's gonna get an eight eight uh, eight point five. Um, oh yeah. I, I'm I'm rating it low, uh, only because we haven't seen <laughs> enough and and everything. And it's a 
And it's a beat em up, and most beat em ups don't get that high score ranking or anything. But I think it's going to sell really good. I think it's going to be in uh, some good, going to have some good average numbers. And I think, you know, I could probably say across all three platforms and even PC, um, I think it's probably going to be the highest selling um, for that week. Whatever it comes out, if there's nothing that's coming out besides it, that's going to be the game of the week that everybody's going to they're going to probably buy it on a Thursday or a Friday or whenever it drops. Um, I think Tuesday, uh, Tuesday be fine if it drops on a Tuesday, everybody's going to be playing that game and they'll probably beat it within that day because it, it looks oh, like yeah. it's not yeah. too long, game. but it's going to be like, okay, let's hook up. We're doing this, uh, they're doing online co op, Lamont, you off of work. Corey, you off, Stephanie, you off, Celeste, you off, Dan, David, whoever, community, if y'all off, let's play some Ninja Turtles, and let's just have fun. Uh, yeah, 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 definitely. I think they're they're going to try to make this better than all the other Ninja Turtle games. Yes. Um, um, so, so my, my last question. It's <laughs> uh, cool, yeah. Uh, <laughs> what are your other hobbies uh, that you like to do? Or take part in, I should say. Other hobbies. Do I have other hobbies? No, I'm just kidding. Um, uh, let's see. I like to read. I like to... Um, I like to collect figures, collect books. Um, gosh, I don't have a lot of hobbies. I'd like to bring up some. Uh, I was actually just talking about talking to um, uh, one of my friends uh, about uh, maybe like next year, like learn how to play the key- keyboard and use like one of the apps. I, I, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna try that. But uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so I used to do a lot of writing. I'm mean, still do, but um, best like collect different you no know, things. Um, watch a lot of movies. <laughs> We were talking about reviews, and I saw Spider Man No Way Home, the greatest movie. Okay. And of course, Mark had already written a review about it. <laughs> I was just like, wow, he beat me to the punch. I, yeah. I, I, I'm probably gonna go see it tonight because I have I that or or seeing because I haven't. Um... I haven't been able to go to the movies in a while, so I haven't seen Spider-Man, so uh, I'm probably going to go see it because we still got time and I don't have to do anything else after the show. (laughs) Uh, So I'm probably going to go see it. Um, And I This is the one time I got out to go to the... No, I'll take that back because I did go see Ghostbuster uh, Afterlife. Uh, But before that, I, I didn't even step foot in a movie theater. But this time, like, I bought my little Lysol, spraying down the chair and st- spraying down the chairs next to me, you know, had my mask up and my sanitizer, and I was ready. <laughs> not, not me. I, I came in with my mask. I have my nachos and ch- I'm going to have my nachos and cheese, my yeah. drink, and I'm going to yeah. sit my, my tail down in my coat, <laughs> and I'm going to watch the movie. Because, uh, yeah. uh I am going to. What you I, think when you see it, please? I will. I, I definitely will. As, as please, <laughs> don't let it be any dragged out conversations that don't have nothing to do with the movie. Because I, I hate that when it's just a long monologue that don't have nothing to do with what's going on in the movie. Just be like, look. I'm gonna need you to press X B B triangle square and do a combo or something. Move this along. I don't need this. I don't need this talking. If it has to, y'all talking about biscuits, what is biscuits gonna do? Or is it gonna play any kind of role? No. I need to move this along. I know they're gonna be like, Eddie is hard. Oh, you're awesome. <laughs> So, uh, well, before we go, uh, anything that you're snacking on, uh, any kind of favorite snacks, or what's your breakfast meal to go to that that you like? Uh, because it seems now that there's about to be a discussion about waffles and pancakes. Okay, so 
It's funny you said this. I just I just saw these um you know those breakfast toaster strudels? Yes. The breakfast ones. So there's actually one out, but the pastry is French toast. And then you got the egg and the bacon cheese inside it. So all this is French toast. I would check it out. It's really good if you haven't. It's good. Yeah. I would have to check it out and and I'll talk about it on Snack Tendo. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So. It's super good. But yeah, um, like I did a lot of eating on Christmas and probably like this whole week. And I'm just like. I got to eat a salad, you know, so but I haven't eaten salad yet, so eventually I'll get there. But <laughs> uh, I dealt with 7,000 phone calls about these COVID tests, and I'm like, come on now. We don't have them. We, we, we've been sold out. You think a store like us is going to have some COVID tests when no one in the state or in the area has any, but we have 10,000 of them. So you're just going to call and think that we're going to have them. You guys still out of those? We've been out of them since last Tuesday. At the wow. time of this recording, I should say. Wow. I guess I should get one myself, just in case. Well, <laughs> we had this one man, he tried to return it, but uh yeah, that's the conversation after the podcast. <laughs> return it? Wow. That's funny. <laughs> so. Uh, it wasn't used or anything, but he, yeah, it, it, it was, it's a bit to not remember or care for. <laughs> so, uh, but Lamont, thank you for this 1v1. I, I, I apologize oh. to everybody. This, uh, uh, I, I, I know our you. 1v1s sometimes get off rails, and this one felt like a podcast, but I think that's sometimes good for 1v1, where it just feels like, like I, I I tell people when I do one v ones and when I do interviews, I always want things to feel organic, to feel friendly. And I apologize if I talked a lot, uh, but it it always feels like a fr- it's definitely a friendship. It's definitely, you know, we we laugh, we joke, you know, we learn and everything. And I think I always like I said, I always want to make my guests feel comfortable, feel more yeah. welcome. So, uh, thank you, Lamont, for this 1v1. Everybody, you can check more of Lamont's writing at uh, um, bossrush.net. Uh, Lamont, go ahead and plug when you can. Oh, oh. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You can check me out at Boss Rush Network. Um, I've been a little lax on putting, it, putting uh, content out there, but I'm definitely going to start back again. I've got some batters coming, so... Yeah, yeah, definitely uh, check me out. Yes, uh, I, <laughs> I, I, I have to see. I think I put a better in. Uh, it's talking about what retro sports game that you want to come back, and I talk about arch rivals. Oh, have mm. so okay. I <laughs> I hope they do this, but they probably won't. One of my favorite sports games was Super Mario Superstar Baseball. Oh, baseball. Uh, Have you ever played that? Yes, I did. Me and David loved that game. Oh, Oh, we. Yeah. I I wish they they make another one. I, I mean, you know, don't get me wrong, golf and, you know, tennis is fine and all, but I think baseball, I mean, deserves a, another uh, chance. A, a lot of people so uh <laughs> a lot of people think I'm crazy about this game. Uh like that it didn't do well. I, and I was telling them I'm like when I was working at Toys, we would get 9 to 10 uh boxes of this game is $50 and all of them kept selling month after month after month. I don't know mm-hmm. what the final number was for it. But that game, so, and I'm just like, if they will bring this out to Switch, they'll sell even more. If you think I'm kidding, dude. I mean, I, I can just see the the numbers of online play. I, I mean, it's just, come on, Nintendo, come on, make it happen. Yeah, uh, I think, so... 
I think the most requested game now is Final Fantasy 13 Trilogy. It's the most requested game to come out. Final Fantasy 7 13? No, the trilogy. Final Fantasy 13, the trilogy. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Everybody yeah. wants that to come out and they want it on Switch as physical. They they were just like, come on, Square Enix. You need to bring this out. I'm like, look, they still gotta bring the other six games that was uh, that's only on mobile and P uh, that's only on mobile that everybody was uh, <sighs> that was the yeah, like the, that, that anger was... that oh, angered man. the internet <laughs> this year. Whoo. I, I was one of them. I was very upset about that. I'm just like, I I can't get into mobile gaming. I tried it. Sometimes I love it. Not five pence of Fire Emblem. But like Super Mario Run, I can't. I just, I can't. I can't do it. I can't do it. And for them to... I mean, that's such a missed opportunity. I mean, come mm-hmm. on. It even looks like it could be on the Switch. Like, come no, on. It's... I'll just, I'll, I'll say, go and look at the Final Fantasy uh, uh, collection uh, announcement and see everybody's reaction. You, you, If you are down and out, put that on and watch the reactions and just have you a tie. Because, man, when I tell you the... Really? The... Do, <laughs> it's... <laughs> Buggers. It's it, it's it's well deserved. It's understandable, but man, I just like oh, I need some good comedy. Let me throw this good one on. Uh, but everybody, <laughs> that has been one v one. Uh, Lamont, I want to thank you for joining uh, uh joining me for this conversation. Hopefully, you guys thank got to. You. You're welcome. I hopefully you guys get to check out Lamont and his work. Um, and hopefully that if you feel like this one wasn't a one v one, but it was just a good podcast to listen to, we welcome that. Thank you very much. Uh, but that everybody will see you welcome. Uh, thank you everybody. We'll see you next time on one v one. Bye everybody.